Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So, in this entire series of lecture, I am going to take a water tank construction, and we'll see that how the water tank construction is going to happen. So, when I say water tank construction, you can see this is a water tank what I have, and we are going to store the water from here, and through the pipe, it will be connected to the underground uh, pipeline, and it will be supplied to the house, right? So, this is a government project usually what will be undertaken. and we should be knowing how the construction of a water tank will happen okay uh, generally we have seen the building construction which was covered in my earlier course right but here i thought let me add uh, some other topics so that uh, we are going to get a lot of knowledge and in the process i also have learned certain things uh, when i was trying to create a course on this right so before we start with that let us uh, exactly understand how exactly a water tank looks like and what are the components of a water tank so as usual you, you require a footing so we'll be having a footing below this this is a plinth level what we have this is a ground level you can see it here this is the ground level what we have and then we can see a lot of uh, these are the beams actually they are called as bracings these are not given to take care of the load they are the bracings if i don't give the bracings then it becomes a long column so that is why in order to reduce the length of a column we are going to give a bracing there which will act like a tie beam a kind of a tie beam okay and these are the columns and then we have a circular beam here you can see here this is a circular beam the same circular beam you can see it here we have reached to this stage so this is called a staging it depends what should be the height of your uh, water tank so the more the height of your water tank more the more uh, uh, potential energy is going to have right that is rho gh the rho gh the greater the height the more energy it's going to have so so this is called a staging of a tank then after that we have this as a, a bottom dome so this is a dome what we have it's a top ring this is a top ring so you can see here this is a top ring what we have and from there you are going to get a top dome so af after this there is a small dome which is not visible from here right so there is a small uh, top dome from this uh, part you are getting my point and this is a diameter of a water tank so this entire thing from here to here this is a diameter of my water tank right again this diameter is going to be decided based on the capacity of your uh, tank uh so right now whatever project i am discussing it it is having a 50000 capacity so based on that this particular tank has been designed right and when you design the tank uh, you need to design this tank uh, you need to you need to be knowing what should be the capacity of a water that you are going to hold uh, we can do the designing of a tank with the help of etaps or stadpro software uh, i don't know how it is to be done but i will show you few calculations and few etaps or few stadpro model uh, so that you get a idea right so with this understanding uh, we will go uh, one by one so what is the first method of course whenever you do any construction project the first method is that you have to do the marking of the uh, water tank right so the first thing is marking for excavation of soil for water tank foundation uh, so you can see it here how the marking has been done so it's a circular tank that is why a circular marking has been done this will be my center point from the center point you are going to get the diameter what should be the diameter of your tank and based on that the uh, marking has been done practically on the site so uh, the site marking is done for the excavation of the water tank the site is excavated for the required depth the depth of the excavation will be mentioned in the structural drawing and the site engineer will do the excavation accordingly see in this lecture i am not going to teach you each and everything because already most of the things it is covered in my base uh, construction methodology course and most of the things you have understood if you are a, a regular uh, follower or regular listener of my classes uh, you will have you will have a better understanding what i am trying to tell but still wherever it is required i am going to explain you uh, what all what all things has to be explained which you uh, don't know right yeah now this much is understood we have to do the site marking and after that we are going to do the excavation of this and how much excavation of a soil has to be done that will be mentioned in the structural drawing so i'll be showing you the structural drawing as well so after the excavation what we are supposed to do a pcc is placed to get a level surface and the concrete will not come in contact with the soil we know why the pcc is put that is called as plain cement concrete so uh, this is a drawing what i have you can see it here so here the radius is given that from here this is your center point from this center point to this point uh, the radius is 2525 or it can be 2.525 meter so this is a radius if i want a diameter how much will be my diameter so my diameter will be from here to here right agree with me this will be my diameter from this center to this center this is my diameter 
So how much will be your diameter? We always know that diameter will be. If I ask you what is the diameter, diameter will be two times the radius. So diameter will be two into what is radius? Two phi two phi. So if I do the manual calculation of this, my radius will be two into two phi two phi. So it comes out to be phi zero phi zero mm. If I want to put it in meter, it comes out to be phi point. Uh, yeah, it comes out to be five point zero five meter, right? So getting my point. So this is how the uh, drawing will be given to you based on that the execution is done on the side. So if I go back now, if I go one step back, this particular marking what they have done, it is a diameter marking what they have done practically, and from here your marking is five point zero five. Okay, this entire thing. I mean this entire thing. I'll do in this way. From here to here, it is five point zero five meter. It's a diameter, and if you ask me the radius, the radius is how much? The radius from here to here, the radius is ah uh, two point five two five, right? So this is how you are supposed to understand all these things. Yeah. Now, what is the depth of the excavation you are supposed to do? So you can see here a cross section has been given. This is your plain cement concrete, which you already know. Ah, uh, this is a raft what you can get, and over that a beam is going to come. So if you are able to understand, it's well and good. If not, we'll be trying to understand this. Now this is a ground level. So what is this GL? This GL stand for ground level, which is this particular level. From the ground level, how much excavation you are supposed to do? So that is mentioned here. It is written minimum four thousand or up to the hard strata, whichever is higher. That means up to four meter. Four thousand is mm or four meter excavation you are supposed to do. Once you do an excavation of four meter, we should make sure we are getting a hard soil strata. So if you are not getting hard soil strata, then we can do another. Let us say. uh uh another uh, 1 meter of excavation we can do and we can check whether we are getting a hard strata or not usually uh, before we do the excavation before we do the designing a geotech consultant is going to come and he is going to check the quality of a soil and then he is going to tell for this particular tank having this much liter of capacity for this much load we have to do a excavation up to 4 meter and is going to do the uh, calculation and give us give it to us that this is the depth of your excavation so only then we are going to write it here sometime since soil is unpredictable in nature uh, sometime what will happen it may be possible even though a lot of uh, testing has been done you may not get a hard soil strata in that case you can do another 1 meter exca extra excavation and you can make sure that after 1 meter extra excavation that is 4 plus 1 That is five meter. You have got a hard soil strata. Even after that, if you are not getting a hard soil strata, we need to consult the geotech consultant one second so that they can give you some other ideas, right? Most of the cases, four meter is going to be sufficient. Not four meter. This particular thing, whatever is given, uh, it is practically possible, and we are going to do an excavation of four meter. This much is clear. Yeah. So this is my ground level. Now coming to this part, this is my plain cement concrete. Then I'll be having a raft. Uh, A raft foundation here, and over that a beam is going to come, and these are your columns, right? Now this much understanding you need to have, and rest things I'm going to explain you in the upcoming uh, lectures, right? Other than that, forget about all these things. These things that is one, two, three. These are the columns, and this is uh, dimensions given for the beam, which we are going to understand later. As of now, try to understand we have that uh, we need to do a circular marking, and for that we need to get a radius, which is already mentioned here. and we should know what is the depth of our excavation which is already given from here these are the things which we need to understand yeah so once that is done the excavation of a soil for water tank foundation so you can see we are done the marking and then we did the excavation so this excavation is how much from here to here the excavation has been done and it is a 4 meter excavation what we have done according to our drawing in the drawing it was mentioned 4 meter so we have done a 4 meter excavation here okay this yeah right so this part uh, we have kept it as it is or you can even do the excavation here since the excavation was not required we have done excavation here okay yeah so the site is excavated for the required depth which is a uh, uh, 4 meter according to our uh, structural drawing the depth of excavation will be mentioned in the structural drawing which we already seen and if you are a site engineer here the site engineer will do the excavation according after the excavation a pcc is placed to get a level surface and the concrete will not come in contact with the soil so you can see it here once we have done the excavation you can see the entire excavation has been done see 
I'll be showing you two different images because there was two tank which uh, two water tank which was happening simultaneously. Sometimes I may show you an image of one tank. Sometimes I may show you an image of another tank. So don't get confused because previously I showed you one image where this particular part was there, but here this part is not there. Okay, uh, you need to understand the concept uh, since. Uh, I have taken both the images, whatever was possible from my side. Now you can see once all the excavation has been done, again, it's the same concept remains the same. Again, here also, you can see a small uh, rebar which has been kept here. It's a center point. From here, whatever was a radius, they have done the excavation of that. So that is why th such a big excavation has happened. Okay. And this would have been a four meter excavation. Let us consider. So we have done a four meter excavation. Suppose in the structural drawing, Instead of four meter, if it was written two meter excavation, then we would have done a two meter excavation here, right? Yeah. Now you can see a plain cement concrete has been put, right? Why the plain cement concrete has been put? Because we can direct, we cannot directly keep our reinforcement, right? If you directly keep your reinforcement over the soil, it's not a good practice, and there will be a lot of corrosion and all those things. So in order to get a uniform surface, so that even if like let us say if you're having a good soil. Even then, we are not going to keep a rebar over that. The reason is that uh, the, the surface is, won't be uniform. It will be something, you know, uh, in a zigzag way, uh, right? So that is why in order to have a uniform surface, we put a PCC, which you can see it here, which called as plain cement concrete. Yeah, so once the excavation is done a suit, at a suitable depth, the PCC is led for M7.5 grade of 1 is to 4 is to 8, and the thickness of PCC varies from 75 to 100 mm. After PCC, the curing is done for a few days. Once the PCC is led, the next step is to place the raft reinforcement. So curing for PCC is also done. And similarly, you can see the uh, bars placed here, right? The BBS for the same is prepared and the work will be started. So you can see it here. The excavation has been done. The PCC has been put. And after that, you are going to keep the reinforcement. This is a raft reinforcement we are going to put. You can see it here. So there is a lot of water, which is not a good construction practice. But still, these people have done that and it is okay. Okay, maybe after placing the rebar, uh, the rain might have come or they might have encountered water here. It's okay, not an issue with that. Okay, yeah. So uh, now I'm going to show you. Now I'm going to show you uh, a structural drawing for this so that we get a better idea. So this is a complete structural drawing for this particular water tank. Okay. So if I try to zoom in here, you can see it here, the same thing. This is a plan reinforcement details for the angular raft foundation. And you can see from here, it is given a radius, which is R2525. And I've explained you all those things. So this, are, this is my uh, radius, what is given or a diameter, uh, which is uh, two times the radius. And based on that, we have done the marking. Okay. Along with that, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. So these six are the columns which are going to come after that. And this is a beam which is going to come right now. We are just put a PCC over the PCC. We are going to put a raft reinforcement. And after that, the beam is going to come. So what is the width of the beam that is mentioned here, which is 350 mm, right? So you can see it here. Raft beam is mentioned, which is 350 by 500 mm, right? So I hope up to here, your concepts are clear. Other than that, you can see it here, this particular cross section. It's a 4,000 or up to the hard strata, whichever I had shown you. And all those things, it is given here. R3, R4, D1, R2 and all, which I'm, I'm going to explain you in the further lectures, right? So other than that, uh, this is a cross section of your tank. This is how your tank is going to look. Yeah, so this is how an entire tank is going to look, okay? This is a total height of a tank and then a, a small dome is going to come. So in this way, the dome is going to come and here you're, you're going to store the water. So this was all about the structural drawing that we have for this particular project. And other than that, you will be getting a notes also. You need to understand one more thing. Check, see here. So this. Yeah. So what is written here? All the dimensions are in MM. Do not scale the drawing. The water tank is designed for earthquake loading zone three. So from where do you decide this? We have different zones of earthquake, right? We have zone two, zone three, zone four, and zone five. And this is a code book what we have. IS 1893, 1984 is an old code book. Uh, it, has, it has got revised and we have 1893, 2016 code book. Then the grade of a concrete that you're supposed to use is M30 grade of concrete. And it is conforming to Indian standard 456, 2000 is a code book what we follow. The grade of a steel, what they're supposed to use is FE 415. 
confirming to Indian standard 1786-1985. Cover, and this is the cover what is given. You, if you had taken my earlier course, we know what is clear cover and all those things. For footing, we are supposed to provide 50 mm. Column, it is 40. Beam, it is 25. Slab, it is 20. Similarly, you can see for the slab, it is mentioned 25 mm. For the beam also, they are mentioned 25 mm. For the column, it is 40 mm, like I mentioned. And footing, it is 50 mm. SBC for soil shall be ensured at the site through soil investigation, which I already told you that a geotech uh, consultant will come and do the testing of the soil. The part of the dome at the support approximate one meter length shall be cast along with the top ring beam. It is already, which, are, which we are going to see in the further lectures. A manual shall be provided with a cast iron fitting at the top. We'll try to see what exactly is the manual and all those things. Now coming to the tank, what is the total capacity of a tank that we're constructing right now? The total capacity is a 50,000 liters capacity for 7.5 meter staging. Okay, staging in the sense this particular height. Yeah, so you can see this particular height. So this particular height, what you can see, you know, this particular height, we call this as a staging. Okay, so we call this as staging. Yeah. So what is the capacity? It is mentioned here. The total uh, tank capacity is a 50,000 liters capacity for 7.5 meter staging. And the height of each staging is 2.5, 2.5 and 2.5. So 2.5, 2.5, 2.5 comes out to be 7.5 meter. And now coming to the SBC of a soil. So this 100 kilo Newton per square meter, this is given by the geotech consultant. And based on the add only, we have designed our foundations and all. Other than that, coming to the dimension, bottom reinforcement, top reinforcement, we'll try to see in the next lecture. So I hope your concepts are clear up to here. You got an idea uh, regarding how a water tank looks and how the excavation is done, how the marking is done. So in the upcoming lectures, we'll try to take up the other part of a construction, like how the raft uh, reinforcement will be put up, how the raft beam will be put up, how the columns will be erected and all those things. We'll see you back in the next lecture.